The Odd Even are an alternative metal band known for riff-oriented hard rock with a massive groove and hypnotic kick that will spin you around on your bar stool and get you to your feet in a jam-packed arena. Similar to the way Nikola Tesla and Leonardo da Vinci said their inspiration came from somewhere beyond Earth, Weed on bass and E.T. on guitar wrote the songs as of harnessing the power of divine intervention. Chris Voles handles the vocals with brilliant expertise, and Tasha Jones works her magic on drums. As for the origin story, we have the legal obligation here at Eclipse to inform our listening audience that the two founding members of the Odd Even are, in fact, infamous secrets that the government has been hiding for years in reference to hangar number three on grounds of Area 51. Originally, Weed and E.T. were found inside presu- pressurized sleeping chambers in a strange pod-shaped craft that had crash-landed near an opal mine in the South Nevada desert. The two aliens were composed of a crystallite substance with silver-colored blood pulsing through semi-transparent veins. Weed was configured in the shape of a man-sized king cobra, E.T., resembled a mammoth two-headed scorpion. There were odd-shaped medallions <laughs> piled at the foot of each enclosure and odd-looking string instruments in the side compartments, indicating that the strange beings were both leaders of some alien warrior class as well as musicians, and they woke and communicated with each other, sounding vaguely like grunge guitars with someone twisting the tuning pegs. The two were then quickly transformed transported to hangar number three and caged in glass observation booths next to the bone saws, dissection scapels, power drills, and wrench basins. On nearly, uh, on three nearly operating tables, there were blood splattered heads of the aliens stuck on trophy spikes and in the sheet pans and the next morning, January 1st, 2019, officers discovered that the new prisoners had vanished. Rumor has it that overnight, the two other word, other worldlers <clears throat> broke containment and discovered the robotics lab, where they pilfered capsules containing nanobot technology that they used to redevelop themselves in human form. Learning the history of Earth's rock and roll, every album ever made, every stream, every single, every YouTube video, review, and social media post. The mapping war was self-learned, and in seconds, they were writing their own new chapter, developing their own sound and souls. New musical journeys and post-prison break. They reasoned that separation was the best tactic to cloak their strange presence in the new world. Slowly, they worked their way into their new lives, into blissful forgetfulness, and it was only when we took a DNA test that he realized that he had no DNA, that he had to wake up, and he had to find E.T. to figure out a way to deal with his broken and wonderful sea of humanity. It was not long before the odd even were opening for Faster Pussycat, Bang Tango, Soul Fi, Last in Line, and Nonpoint plus headlining shows in Florida, New York, and Philly. Check out the tour page to see all past shows and venues played. Um. Thank you for that fantastic story, Weed. That was very, very nice. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I believe now you got all the facts, so I didn't hear anything that was fictitious. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, this is Arwen Lewis, and you're listening to the Arwen Lewis Show today. Um, my very special guest is Weed from the band uh, The Odd Evens, and you just heard um, how you know how he ended up here on Earth, which is an incredible story. And we're here talking about um, your um, the Odd Evens' new record, Darkness, and playing some tracks from that today. Um, so, Weed, thank you for coming on the show and welcome. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, I thought, you know, really quickly, you've got some two amazing characters in particular in your band. Um, where did you both get the names Weed and E.T.? So it's been a lifelong of, of fun for me. Uh, that's actually my real last name. Uh, so didn't have to get creative with that. And uh, E.T. is actually, he's a video editor. And so Edit Todd became an E.T. quite a while ago. And, and and there we go. And as far as the whole tie into the aliens and all that good stuff, uh, I was actually adopted 
uh, as a young kid. And uh, my wife had asked me, she said, you know, we don't know much about your, your health situation and stuff. So you should try like one of the ancestor DNA things and, you know, see what we can figure out. And so I spit in the vial the first time I got no results. Second time, no results. Third time, no results. And I talked to ET and he said, he said, damn, dude, that's odd. Even he said maybe you're an alien or something. Cause we're not getting any results. And, and then we ran with the whole, the whole space thing. And, and there we go. <laughs> And is that where the name um, Odd Even came from, too? Is that where you got your name for the band? Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, it was just <laughs> it was like, why Why do I keep spitting in these vials and we're not figuring this out? In the end, the fourth time was a charm, and it, it did did work out. And, and I actually found my, my birth mother and a whole bunch of cousins, all kinds of stuff. So it was really cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and music, you know, you followed your path in music, and it brought you home to your family, which is amazing. That's it. Absolutely. Um. So let's talk about your band. Uh, let's talk about your sound. Um, in your bio, it said that you've got an alternative metal with riff-oriented hard rock, a massive groove, and hypnotic kick. Um, how did you develop the sound? And is this uh, are you are you like the lead person of the band, or do you all have a say in the sound and the creation of it, or how did it come to be? Uh, so Et and I write all the songs. Um... The way this band came about, we've been playing together since high school. We've probably been in 10, 12 different bands and we've, you know, kind of entered each other's lives and, and, and left for a bit and come back because uh, we were really like working together and all that stuff. But um, a few years back, I guess like 2017, we were, uh, I was playing in a funk rock band. He was playing in a reggae band and we got approached by a guy from the, the DC Baltimore scene uh, that we'd known for a while. And he was putting this band together and, uh, it had the drummer from Kicks, uh, had a guitar player from uh, Charm City Devils, and uh, I forget the old name of the band. But anyways, it was all guys that, that we knew. And so we were like, yeah, that sounds cool. Let's, let's jump on that. And, uh, you know, a not uncommon story. We went on the road with that band, and, and we all kind of stopped getting along with the singer. And at some point, E.T. and I were like, man, we're writing most of the songs. Let's just take our stuff and take our toys and go home, you know. And so... We, uh, we decided to split off, get out of that band and start our own thing. And, you know, just so happened that it coincided right around that time with my whole DNA testing. And uh, we launched the odd, the odd event and we scooped up a few other players and 2019 and, and the rest is history, as they say. Nice. Um, and uh, is this your first release um, together? Is Darkness your first release? Officially? No, this is this is number three. So. Okay. Uh, we put out Space Juice in 2019. Um, we went out on the road. We did some shows, as you mentioned, in the bio with Faster Pussycat, Bang Tango, Last in Line. We went down to New Orleans and Georgia. We did some shows with Soulfly, Nonpoint, uh, did a few headliners. And we were ready to, quote, unquote, take on the world. And wham, COVID hit. Uh, we actually released that record on, on 420 uh, in 2020. And, it, you know, the world stopped. We were canceling gigs, uh, trying to regroup, trying to stay together as much as we could. Uh, thank God for technology. You know, we were able to send ideas back and forth and still practice kind of, uh, use that term loosely, but yeah, I mean, get together a little bit virtually. Um, and we just kept the pedal to metal. We said, hey, what can we do to, to get better? Um, you know, what can we do to progress? And uh, we started shopping what we, we had recorded uh, we got a bite from Pavement. Uh, they're based in Chicago, uh, pretty big hard rock label. Uh, they picked us up in 2020 at the end of the year. Uh, we charted on Billboard uh, on the uh, the uh, the other the, the secondary market charts. Oh wow! And then we put out Dance of the Dead. And when the skies finally cleared up, that was 2021. Uh, we went out on the road with a Demon Flaw. Uh, we did a. I think it was a 32 city six week tour with them across the country. Um, and that's where we befriended Chris from Flaw, who's now our singer in the odd even. And okay. we also crossed paths with, with Tasha, who was in Saliva at the time. Um, okay. And we just started talking about, you know, next steps and what we wanted to do and all that kind of stuff. And you all just kind of had a synchronicity and a vibe that worked pretty much. So. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of funny. I think the first time I, I even presented this to Chris, I mean, we were somewhere in Indianapolis, maybe at like, four in the morning on an IHOP and, you know, I was sort of on my face, tired from the show and the after party. And, you know, I said, Hey man, check out this, this riff I did on acoustic guitar and, you know, played it for him on my phone. And, 
And, you know, I was like, man, you should think about doing some stuff with us. And, you know, of course I had, we had a singer at the time um, and we weren't planning on, you know, dissolving that lineup. Uh, but just so happened after that tour, we got off uh, family things kind of got in the way for him. Um, and so we decided to move on and we said, Hey, Chris, would you be interested in coming and recording? He said, who else is in the band? I said, well, it looks like we're going to get Tasha from Saliva on drums. And he was like, that sounds really cool. Yeah, let's check it out. So ET and I sent them a bunch of demos and we brought them into uh, to Baltimore in the, I guess it was a year ago. So it was January, 2023. Okay. And we banged at the record. Yep. Um, so can we, let's move back a little bit. And I would love to hear just about your evolution as a musician. Um, when did you start playing and what exactly do you do in the band? What's your role? Um, I know you touched on that, but let's expand on that a little bit. And yeah, sure. like what, what, what was your first instrument? What instruments do you play? So my, my parents growing up, my adopted parents, they were very supportive in anything I did, but they were, you know, I'm, I'm kind of flighty. And sometimes I, you know, I want to try, I want to do a whole bunch of things at once. And I'm never the master of the single thing. I'm always pretty good at a ton of things. And my brother is the exact opposite. He's a master of everything he does. And so he got into guitar. God, I guess it must have been like fourth or fifth grade. And, you know, I would run in there and grab his guitar and plug it in, just bang on it. And, you know, he was getting all pissed off. And, you know, it was like, hey, look, you know, somebody get this guy a guitar. He's killing me. He's throwing Van Halen on a Black Sabbath. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's messing stuff up and blah, blah, blah. So. My parents took me to the store and said, hey, look, we'll rent you an instrument and we'll uh, you know, see if you stick with it. And I was really into learning the whole thing about music at the time. Like, I didn't want to read sheet music. I wanted, I wanted to rock, you know. And um, I used to race BMX all over the country. And lo and behold, a bunch of the guys I raced BMX with were all musicians. And I, they said, you know, hey, well, why don't you give up that guitar We getting a bass player? I started playing bass with them and that ever since then, that's been my main instrument. I play guitar too. Uh, actually, I actually have a two-year degree in music, you know, as I work my way up. Um, but yeah, I just always kind of bass has been my main thing. And and I've always been into to writing, recording, playing, all that good stuff. So it started with my brother saying, get the hell off my guitar. And I've been at it ever since, playing in all kinds of different various bands and and touring around the country. So um so as far as touring is concerned um like have you what are some of the biggest uh venues that you've played in and how do those compare to like a small bar scene and how does that experience differ as a performer i mean they're they're totally different um you know i've, I've over the years i've played at stadiums i've played in you know 50 person venues um and you know, I, I mean, the stadium's obviously a lot less intimate, but wow, it's a lot of fun. It's a big rush. Yeah. It's pretty amazing to get on the, the big outdoor stage. You know, the festivals are always cool, all that stuff. Um, unfortunately, they, they happen to coincide a lot of the time with summertime, so it's like 8 million degrees out, and you're yeah. you're dying by the time you get off stage. Um, but I really like the I, – I, if I had to pick a favorite, I'd probably say like the – 250 to 750 size rooms those rooms are really cool because they're big enough that you can have a great performance you can rock out you have a good time and you get to meet a lot of people i mean we always make a, a point of it to you know, get back to the merch table talk to people and, and sign anything they want hang out have a beer and and at the big places you just you just can't do that uh, but at the the smaller clubs and theaters uh, you certainly can. And so that's, I think that's probably my sweet spot. That's what I like the best. Although, you know, Hey, look, I'll take an acoustic gig any day of the week. That's fun too. And it's fun in a different way. You know, it's sitting in front of 25, 30 people is, is a blast. Just doing your thing. I mean, you can talk to them from the stage. They're part of the show. You know, it's really cool. So by acoustic, do you mean like, it's just you and your guitar? Are you singer songwriter as well? So I sing badly. Nobody wants to hear that very much, but I certainly have attempted that over the years. But, you know, just like acoustic duos and stuff, you know, if I can get somebody that they can play guitar and sing. Uh, there's been times over the years where you know, I'll just bring a guitar or bass. Maybe we'll have somebody playing percussion and, uh, you know, uh, two to three pieces is normally my sweet spot. You know, my, my kids and stuff like when I play acoustic guitar and sing to them, but the rest of the world, eh, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, every experience is different. Um, what about, so do you do acoustic bass or stand-up bass at all? Uh, I have a two degree in music, so I've dabbled in that, but it's definitely not my forte. Um, no. 
you know, I think when, when we were in music school, actually I, I was in school with ET at the time. Um, it was pretty, pretty entertaining because we were playing some of the bigger clubs around here and, and one of the real, the, the hip cats, one of the jazz teachers caught that caught wind that we were playing at hammer jacks, which was this huge rock venue back at the time in Baltimore. And he's like, you know, we had to come down to a jazz ensemble. He goes, Oh, this ought to be good. The guys with the, they're going to put on tight pants and wear lipstick and fluff out their hair tonight or going to be in my jazz ensemble. This ought to be really nice. So we got picked on a little bit for being the, uh, the rock guys, but it was cool. It was a great learning experience. Learned a lot about music and, uh, to be honest, I never thought I would have done that when I, you know, started out banging on my brother's guitar. Although, if you put me in front of a room right now and said, here's some sheet music, it would be a long day. It's been a while. <laughs> I feel like it's really nice as a musician to be able to, like, kind of develop your style first before you go too hard into theory. Because then you develop your, your, you know, your artistry in a different way, you know, and then I feel like when you learn the tools, like you said, you just did, um, it just gives you more freedom to elaborate on your art. Like, do you agree with that? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I, I you know, I'll, I'll be driving down the road or I'll just be taking a walk or, or, or whatever. And I'll, I'll get something in my head, whether it's a groove or a melody or whatever, and I'll, you know it's so great to have technology now because 90% of the time, I'm 9% of the time you get your phone with, you can just go voice memos and go la, 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 here, here's this, whatever it is. And, and, and the next thing you know, you're, you're, you're coming, you're able to take that home with you. You won't forget it. Um, hell, I remember back in the, in the nineties, you know, I'd be driving home from somewhere to try to get to a tape recorder, you know, and don't forget yeah. the song thing. this like 5,000 times. And, and, and you don't now. And, and, you know, I mean, the odd even is certainly, you know, it's a hard rock band. So, you know, we're influenced by everyone from when we started the Black Sabbath, the Led Zeppelin, the Van Halen, to all the way to Alice in Chains, to Soundgarden, to, to new music today. Um, but, I mean, there's tons of times where I'm like, wow, that's a really cool idea. What's that? And I'm like, you know what that is? That's a goofy little nursery rhyme thing that I'm going to play to my two-year-old. And then the next day it's like, wow, that's a pretty happening funk groove you know what i'm not in a funk band right now but my friends are i'm gonna send this over there that way you know or whatever so yeah it's it, it's a blast and I, I dabble in everything so and so that's kind of how like your writing process is it sounds like you hear the music and do you write lyrics too or is there another lyricist in your band yeah et writes most of the lyrics for this okay. band um typically my uh as far as the lyrics go is, is melody and song idea Okay. Um, and maybe one or two lines, uh, you know, he writes probably 90% of, of the actual lyrics, but it, it normally starts with, like I said, I'll just, you know, I've got a guitar by my desk and no matter what I'm doing, you know, I, I'm just like, Oh, there's an idea. I'll grab a guitar, play something, record it. And it, if it sits for a day or two, maybe I'll develop it. If not, sometimes I'll just send it right to ET and say, we got to record this. Um, and then I'll get together with him and we'll go to his house. And some days it's, it's just, oh, yeah, I hear this beat. So let me let me program this beat, and I think it goes with this. Oh, no, it doesn't. It goes with, oh, wow, we got a new song. And I'll grab a guitar or a bass, or, or sometimes I'll go over there, and he's like, let me have the first 30 minutes. This is what I got. You know, and, and you know, he'll go, and, and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. This is what I'm hearing there. And, you know, and so we've just been doing it together for so long that we play off each other, and it's it's a really good uh, good team. Nice. And it sounds like, and it's like, as far as like the drum beat is concerned. So do you like give your drummer like the beats and tell, like give, it's a, a give her freedom to come up with her own like rhythm and percussion within like the time signature or how does that work? Yeah, without a doubt. Well, she lives in LA and Chris lives okay. in Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, I think I alluded to before that we flew them in. And so what we did is once they signed on, uh, we took our demos, you know, we tried to make it as, is basic but is kind of outlined as possible to give them the freedom to come up with parts and all this kind of stuff and and unless there's something like you know that's very obvious you know if, if the bass is slide up you know i better hear you know what i'm saying and that better happen um but i mean she's such a pro that you don't even have to explain that you know what i mean yeah. and so you know our our stop start and stop with that is like you know she's in the booth and it's like double kick, more floor tom, blah, blah, blah. And she'll do it and she goes, you know what, I can do it better or I can do it different. And then we'll do eight different takes and go, okay, out of those eight, 
Two of them are definite keepers. We got this. Next song. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, same kind of thing with Chris. You know, Chris, you know, we're like, here's what we have for a melody. Here's how we sang it on the demo. But the reason why you're in the band is because we like your growl. We like your rasp. We like your attack. So now let's hear how Chris is going to do it. Yeah. Nice. Um, I love hearing about different bands process and their creation. And I just think the underlying thing is like you all understand each other and you're all capable and well versed enough to create like this really cool, you know, music that you create as a whole. Um, And we did. I didn't mention it. But in the beginning of the show, we did play 100th Monkey, played a little excerpt from that. And uh, now we're actually getting ready to head out to break. Um, Everyone, if you're just tuning in, my very special guest is Weed from the band The Odd Even. Uh, you can find the odd even um, at uh, the odd even band on Facebook and also under at Eclipsed Records, Twitter at the odd even the, and at Eclipse Records, Instagram at the odd even band at Eclipse Records, TikTok at the odd even at Eclipse Records, and uh, visit the Eclipse uh, Record website at www.eclipserecords.com. And we're going to take you out to break with their song, Another Nail, and bring you back in with the title track off of their album called Darkness. And don't go anywhere because we're going to play their song, Whiskey, in its entirety at the end of the show. And everybody, this is Arwen Lewis. You're listening to the Arwen Lewis Show. We'll be right back. <laughs> 